Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral, where once again we're going to be taking on the Battlecruiser vs. Dreadnought mission. My previous design was pretty shit, um, I'm going to plainly admit that. My plan was bad, sailing broadside to an enemy battleship and then hoping that I could hit him with torpedoes and instead get torpedoed. Well, that was not really part of the equation, that was just bad design and bad thinking. Also, thank you guys for pointing out that zigzagging actually works. I thought that it didn't, because I didn't see the stat. Now, there are so many different things popping up on screen that it's easy for me to miss something like that. Especially when I'm not just playing the game, but I'm also running a commentary on it at the same time. So, uh, thank you guys for pointing that out. I'm going to try and apply that in this game, or in this uh, new trial. Now, we're going to take on the Battlecruiser versus Battleship with Enhanced Firepower as a bonus. Trying to maximize the firepower and, while zigzagging, hopefully not getting hit as much. Alright, um, before I kick off, I've had a lot of people comment on the recent videos, and I really appreciate all your input, but please, when you have not yet played this game, I'm going to take your comments with a grain of salt. And here's why I'm saying that. I've had a lot of comments say, uh, hey, you're doing X, Y, and Z wrong. Uh, oh, and I've never played the game. Hang on. You never actually played the game? And yet, you're commenting on everything that could be done better. Uh, I'm not saying it's impossible, but if you've never played the game, you don't know what the limitations of the game are. You don't know exactly how the game plays and feels when you're actually handling it. Um, I'm going to take your comment with a grain of salt. Not saying that I don't appreciate your honesty, but you're kind of invalidating your own comment. Alright, now we have our Battlecruiser 1 hull. Um... What sort of guns can we fit on here? Nope. 14 inch guns. Could I actually fit that? I can. Alright, nice. Um, let's start with 14 inch guns and then see if I can build the rest of the ship around that. After weight offset. There. Okay, main tower. Um, I would prefer to stay at longer ranges, so if I can at all fit it, I'm going to go with the advanced tower. To make sure that I don't have as much uh, need to close in. Secondary tower. Uh, if it was going to fit on this hull. Ship is overweight. Stop fat shaming my ship. There you go. Um, what I can also do is go to um, yeah, the multiple expansion steam engine. I was hoping for turbines because they are a lot lighter than these things. Or actually, no, it's not that bad. It's 7.5% uh, versus minus 8%. So it's not that bad. Um, we're just going to have to go with the multiple expansion steam engine. Then, I'll take an auxiliary engine 1 to make sure that my turret traverse is a little higher and uh, I have less maximum speed penalty. Natural boilers, no, I usually take an upgrade to the boilers because the standard boilers are just not very good. More funnel capacity. I'm a bit concerned about how close the main and second island are together. But I really don't have a lot of options here. Four weight offsets, 1%. I'll fix that later. Now, funnel. Could I get away with going for one funnel, I wonder? Should that be enough? No, that's, <laughs> that's not quite enough. 33.9%. <laughs> um... <clears throat> Going with more funnels means that your ship just has overall better acceleration. Which I think in this case could be important. If I want to not just zigzag, but also jiggle my speed. So speed up at some times, slow down at others. Just to throw off the enemy's aim as much as possible. Before I forget, let's throw that down. Uh, let's make it 30 knots. Then my engine efficiency goes up to 45. Let's see, would this be enough? 90%. Now I'm getting somewhere. Plus 13% acceleration. Uh, I wonder what the sweet spot is, actually. Where do you get that full acceleration? Not the 100%, but not a penalty. I think it would be at 80%, possibly. Yeah, because if I'm at 75.2, my engine efficiency goes... Or, yeah, uh, if I'm at 75.2... Engine efficiency, my acceleration goes down. Whereas if I'm closer to 80, it seems to line up... Yeah, there you go. That's good enough. Okay, then. Weight 
11,000 tons, sorry, 17,000 tons out of 20, cost 12 out of 20. Now, the challenge is how do I continue to build the rest of this ship? Um, I will take anti-flood too. Reinforced bulkheads, let's go for maximum bulkheads. Because I'm going to have to try and maximize both the cost efficiency... So use almost all of my budget and get more displacement in. But more displacement usually also means more uh, power in the sense that you need more engine power to keep going. Now, um, stereoscopic rangefinder, long range gun accuracy. There we go. Torpedo wise, uh, you guys were saying build a torpedo cruiser. Yeah, no. I can only put one torpedo launcher on the side. And I mean one tube. Not just one set of launchers of four, but no, it's just one. So I'm going to make this design completely devoid of torpedo tubes. It just isn't worth it. Besides, it would mean that I have to close in to three kilometers to a battleship, which is probably bristling with secondary. So thank you very much, but I'll pass. Uh, secondaries. Could I at good range hit him with secondaries? Maybe 13.2. Yeah, I was kind of worried about this. Doesn't fit. I'm going to have to make the ship a little bigger. Hopefully getting some more distance here. Or some more um, slots. There we go. Mm, nah. Yo, oh, actually this does fit. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Overlaps with a 14 inch. Okay. So what if I put the secondaries here, and then put the 14 inch in front of that? Or, more interestingly, could I put 9 inch centerline semi-secondaries? I can. Okay, uh, that would make it interesting. But it would limit, severely limit the penetration power of these guns. So, while it would make for an interesting design, I think against a Dreadnought, it is not the right way to go. Let's get the four weight offset down. 0 0.2. There. I could potentially go with a Barbette. But I think my hull isn't big enough to support that. So, I would need to go bigger. No, the hull isn't getting any bigger. Despite adding about 10%, it's not getting any bigger. So I wouldn't be able to fit another gun turret, <clears throat> even if I wanted to. And otherwise, yeah, I probably have to go with smaller guns, which I really don't want to do. Okay, let's set up the rest of the ship first before I try adding additional guns. Uh, black powder. Now I'll go for TNT. More shell penetration and more shell damage. Standard shells. Super heavy shells. More shell penetration, more shell damage. Just flat bonuses. Standard reloading. No, auto reloading. Minus 35% to gun reload time. Hydraulic turrets, electro hydraulic turrets. Rangefinder's good. What's my reloads? My reload's 45 seconds on the guns. 200 rounds per gun. So that should be more than enough. Penetration. Uh, I can fire out to 20.9 kilometers. I wouldn't probably hit anything at that range. But if I did, I would go through a belt armor of 3.7 inches. So that is something that I could use to make sure that I can actually hurt that battleship at long range. And for those of you who are commenting, hey, you should be using um, the AP at long range to make plunging fire happen. You're absolutely right. I completely misplayed that. Go for 21,500. A bit more deck armor. Because if I'm firing at long range, he's going to be firing at long range. And my deck armor, so the uh, defense against shells which are coming down like that, would be very important. I think that I can go pretty much without the casemate guns. Because these things, while they do fire out to a range of 14, their accuracy is dreadful. Their accuracy really only starts to ramp up at around 5,000 meters. 5,000 meters, they're 
2,500 meters there at 37%. So that's not a range where I want to be. That's not what I'm going to be using. Whereas these things, um, actually, <laughs> these are similarly shit. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, well, so be it. So be it. Could I put single barrel 8 inches? Or smaller 5 inch? Now, see, I want to be at at least 10 kilometers away. So it would have to be at least 6 inch. Overlaps with the 8 inch gun. Here. Ship is overweight. Okay, we'll just up that a little. I'm also rapidly approaching the uh, budget limit. There. Okay, I have about 500 left. A little under. Now, the ship's going to get too heavy. If I maximize this... this Oh, this is maximized. <clears throat> right. Okay. So that's not quite going to work. Now, previously I had access to acoustics because... Or actually, I didn't have access to acoustics. My bad. Ah, never mind that. Okay, I think... We can take this ship out for a spin. Let's try to get the aft weight offset completely negated. Centerline guns, 14 inch. To 1.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, there. Okay, so, ship stats overall. Um, this is the weight and cost, that's not terribly interesting. Stats, surface visibility 6,000 meters. We can apparently spot for 5,000 meters. Spotting boosts received from the highest operational tower of the ship, which would be the main tower. Okay, so I can spot ships up to 5,000, but that would also, of course, interact with how much surface visibility the other ship has. I'm not exactly sure how the game calculates that, but here we are. Target signature. Um, I am very, very visible. Adding more objects to the ship, for example, towers, turrets, etc., increases the target signature. Yes, well, that's something that I don't think can be helped. Torpedo detection range, 85 point, or plus 85%. Okay, I'm not exactly sure how the torpedo detection is calculated either. Longitude weight offset. Weight distribution on the longitudinal axis of the ship may cause instability that increases pitch motion of the hull and affects gun accuracy. This is why I'm always looking at uh, offset. Because if, for example, I would put the turret in a position where you'd have 10% weight offset, you're going to be facing a penalty for that weight offset because the ship's going to be uh, interacting with the waves different. Pitch is going to be negatively interacting with my base accuracy. Um, affected by weight distribution, hull design and size of the ship. And we have a decent bit of roll. Base accuracy of 15, thanks to the increased base stack of the main turrets. Long range accuracy, plus 20% bonus. Aiming speed, <clears throat> plus 22.5. I think that's from the tower. Is it? Mm, maybe tower and tech combined, because this gives me 10 aiming speed. And the aft tower gives me another... Yeah, there it is. This is 12.5. Oh, sorry, this is the aft tower, and this is 10. Yeah, so that's how that's calculated. Comms range is really not important. Damage control. We have more water pumping, we have faster firing extinguishing, and we have faster ship repair. All right. Let's go. Uh, jiggling the speed, so faster, slower, faster, slower. We're fighting the British Empire, and we are the Spanish. Now, previously, one of you guys was saying, hey, uh, you cannot sink us because we are the Spanish. Well, let's see if that goes for the British as well. Uh, please don't use HE at this range. I think that that is <clears throat> not something that's going to be very useful. Let's see what we can find out about their ship so far. Those are pretty small turrets. What you put on there? Nine inch? That's interesting. Because if it is a 9 inch, then it means that he really doesn't have any great damage output. 
And he might not yet... Well, yeah, he's probably going to be in range. But I don't think he knows exactly where I am. Because none of his turrets are actually doing anything. It's going to take a bit of time to identify that ship. So in the meanwhile, let's have the Santa Paula do as much damage as possible. Base accuracy, 4.8. And I am... I'm speeding up the cruise instead of slowing down. Accuracy, there you go, on cruise speed, 20.5%. Now, of course, it's going to take a bit of time to actually dialed in on this battleship. Or Dreadnought, rather. Although these couple of rounds are not looking too bad. Oh, fire set. First bit of damage has been done. The, um, I don't even know what it's called yet. <laughs> it's been hit by a 14-inch round. All right, let's speed this up. Now, he is coming my way, it seems. And I would imagine that has to do with him being not very good at long-range accuracy. So I'm going to maximize my own advantage by kiting away. Keeping the distance. Uh, yeah, make a turn like that. This is going to cut into my own accuracy for a bit, but so be it. I'll just have to live with that. I'd rather keep that thing at range and keep damaging it from afar than having it close in and going to town on me with all those, what I think are 9-inch turrets, 9-inch guns. I'm already at 8.3. I'm probably missing my bow turret at this stage. I'm, yeah, I'm just seeing secondaries go off. The secondaries, um, they're locked in with a 2.5% chance. But at this point, any bit helps. So just keep going. Let's see, I'm doing 24 knots. What's he doing? I still have no idea. We're halfway through identifying. Let's make it a slightly smaller angle to see if the bow turret can get involved. Because that is another two 14-inch guns that are really want to there we are. So far, he hasn't fired a single shot. And moreover, his turrets still aren't looking my way. Interesting design, this. I would imagine that if you throw something like this at a convoy, it would be a nightmare. Oh, look at that! Destroyed casemate and did a very heavy blow to his bow. He has now taken fire on two separate sections. And I think the third fire is still raging. Now at this rate, I don't even have to be zigzagging or jiggling my speed. Because he's just not going to fire. Which I still don't get. I'm at a range of 11. At a range of 11, you would imagine that even 9-inch guns can actually do something. Now, let's check my own stats. Uh, I'm firing at a range of 11, so that's, say, somewhere between the 10 and 12 stats. I can penetrate 2.2 inches of deck armor at 12 and 1.7 at 10. So, let's say I can do about 2 inches of deck penetration. And I can do... Uh, somewhere maybe 16.8 inches of belt armor. Come on, identify this ship. I want to know why it's not firing. Because if I'm winning due to a bug in the game, then the whole match is really not what I'm looking for. Okay, 10 inch. Maximum range, 14.7. Really? Then why is he not firing? Minimum bulkheads as well. So any damage or any hit is likely to do far more damage. Armor 1.9 to 13.3 inches. 13.3 would be the belt armor. 1.9 would be the deck armor. 
which means that maybe I should just keep sticking to AP at this range and hope that I can penetrate his deck armor. And considering where I'm doing the damage, all the way down there, I think that is actually quite possible. Now, what's my angle? Yeah, I'm too angled. What's your speed, buddy? 22.5. Aha. Uh -huh. So he's trying to close in, but he's just not quite capable of doing so because I'm moving away at 24. Interesting. This is, again, one of those aspects from Ultimate Admiral that I really like. You never quite know what you're going to be fighting. It's not like you're always in this match going to be optimizing against 10-inch guns. Because for all you know, next time he could be using 13-inch. In which case, uh, a light armor scheme, in case that's something you were considering, just does not work anymore. Now, I'm also really, really looking forward to seeing the campaign for this game. I have no idea what it's going to look like. Um, of course, it's going to revolve around being able to design your own ships and trying to get the, uh, the best design, or at least uh, multiple good designs, because you would be using probably all ship classes. Destroyers, battlecruisers, cruisers, battleships, dreadnoughts, whatever you can think of. Um, and then managing your fleets, I guess. But also, I suppose, having a sort of national budget which means that you cannot just keep spamming uh, the battleship. And even if you did, well, let's say you would keep spamming battleships, you would only build battleships, one after the other. You would be, one, facing a problem where it's probably going to be too expensive, so you'd be building fewer ships. Second, I don't think you could afford it, so you could afford fewer ships. And third, what are you going to do if you come up against a fleet of destroyers? Because if there is, let's say, uh, just a fleet consisting of battleships, then sending in a bunch of destroyers with long-range torpedoes, well, the battleships are going to have a hard time. They're going to have to just keep dancing around. Is that the, f the bow turret? The front one? Because from where I'm sitting over here, it looks like he might not be on target, this bow turret. Let's set the rudder to constant 3 degrees right. So we keep circling around the target. And hopefully getting that <coughs> bow turret to also join in on the fun. I would need that damage output. This might throw my aim off a little. Yeah, it's costing me 1% because I'm doing an own maneuver. Still though, look at how much damage this thing has taken. Those fires have really pulled a number on him. Because I might have hit him, but I didn't hit him that bad. Uh, his guns are all operational. There we go. There's another fire. Destroyed some of casemate armor. But why the hell is this thing not shooting back? You're not that blind. At 11 clicks, you would expect this ship to actually return fire. Oh, sorry. At 11 kilometers. Because he has a range of 14. The only thing that I can imagine is that there's either a bug going on or that this ship just does not have the rangefinders. And that's um, where I am at. <clears throat> there we go. No bug. He, uh, there. 2152. BB Cornwallis spotted uh, battlecruiser sent to Paula. And now it's returning fire. There you are. So he just did not see me. And now at 10.3, he does. Alright. Rudder, uh, rudder left. We're going to increase speed. I want to once again disappear from sight. And just keep sniping him from afar. Ow. There goes damage to my main gun. I think he spotted me at a range of about 10, 10, 5, 10, 3. Something in that range. What's the range? 10, 9. 10, 9. I think he stopped firing. Yeah, 
Yeah. Look at where those turrets are aiming. He lost line of sight. Or at least, no, not line of sight, but he lost sight of me. So all of his turrets are probably firing or aimed at the last known position. But they are definitely not capable of hitting me. Because they can't see me. So, let's slow it down once again to 24 knots. Go at a slightly increased angle. As long as I'm doing 24, I'm still faster than he is with his 22 and a half. But I was doing a slight turn the whole time, which probably cut into my uh, distance to the guy. 11.4, that's better. And as expected, my accuracy has gone down to 6.2%. But I can do this all day. Well, I don't have all day, i got 52 minutes left. But I think I might be able to sink this guy in 52 minutes. Come on. Still though, we're going to have to inflict quite a few very damaging hits in order to sink this ship. Interesting. So you can just keep sort of kiting ships around at long range. Doing damage with the plunging fire, or at least hopefully with the plunging fire. And trying to get the damage in that way. Because at short range, the battleship would win. It just has far more firepower. And you saw that when it did fire, I immediately took some damage. Now one of the things that I've really not been paying too much attention to over here, up in the top side of the screen, is what the stats are. I have had shells which have been blocked, no damage. I've had ricochets. They uh, hit the armor surface at a sharp angle and bounce away like that. That was probably a ricochet. Partial pen. They did not penetrate, but it did fracture the armor. We've had two penetrations out of all the hits. So the amount of damage that I'm putting out with my AP is probably not quite good enough. Because you also have, well, ammo detonation, of course, over pen, and torpedo hits. What I would like to see going up, of course, are the number of penetrations, but I'm not sure if that's possible. Because this is still a battleship. I'm going to switch to AP, oh, sorry, to HE for a bit. And see if I can put some more fires on them. And just outright do some more damage. Unfortunately, accuracy is still quite low. 7.3. Now I'm looking at the uh, penalties to aim. Morning time apparently is not a good time to be fighting. We have cloudy weather, a gentle breeze, and smooth waves. But that's only a 3.2% bonus, or uh, penalty. So it's not that bad. I'm near the flagship. Uh, I am my own flagship. Own cruise speed, 16.4. I could go a little slower. And hopefully increase the aim just a little bit. 20.5. And this is a bonus. But I don't want this ship to be getting too close. Let's see what happens then. Bingo. Destroy the funnel and set him on fire. This could be cutting into his maximum speed. Yes, his speed's been reduced to 18 knots. Which is actually excellent for me, because that means I can slow down even further. And create a far more stable firing platform. Hopefully. Slowing down to 20 knots. No, the own ship bonus, so the cruise bonus, does not go up any further. Still, it seems like I'm doing more damage at this range with HE than AP. So the overpens, or the... Um, look at that. That was an overpen. But that was an overpen... Uh, that did not detonate inside the ship. No, maybe not, but it blew off his funnel. And I think that was his only funnel. Because I'm only seeing one, both here and on the design chart of the ship. So it looks like at this range, in this situation, HE might be the way to go. And of course, setting fires is also fun. Um, especially since this battleship with its minimum bulkheads 
the fire is going to spread. It started here, I think, and then spread through two more sections of the ship. What's the range? 11 4. I'm too far away. Let's go for a uh, three degree right rudder. So I can also get my bow turret to work. Here's it down to 7.3. You're just going to have to be patient with this design, apparently. Just trying to close in didn't work. Uh, kiting at long range, that works. Look at where these shells are going, though. <laughs> it's like I'm just throwing this shit out and hoping that it's more or less in the direction of the ship. It doesn't look like anything. I mean, come on, what are you doing? Could we finally get an actual hit? That was possibly a secondary hit from the 8 inch or the whole 1% chance that I have on my 6 inch. Point seven. Oh, he's at 10.5. Hold on, he's returning fire. Increase speed. I don't imagine his accuracy is going to be very good. There, 1.1%. But it's still not something I want to be subjected to. So let's keep moving. And once again, back at cruise speed, but I'm still not suffering from a cruise speed penalty. Like they took another hit. Alright, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Left rudder, 35 degrees. Right rudder, 35 degrees. This ship seems pretty slow at listening to its own rudder. Left rudder, 10 degrees or 11 degrees. I think I'm outturning my own turrets. Another hit. What's the range? 9.6. Uh, I think I'm getting a little too close here. I have to kite away. Increase speed flank. Come on, we could use a couple more hits. Not just like that. It's just cracking his secondary... Or cracking his armor a little. Maintain course. Oh, I can kite the other way. This is when that turret traverse is going to come in useful. Because the stern turret is fine. The stern turret is pretty much on target the whole time. The bow turret is to turn all the way around. Range, 10.6, 10.7, what are you trained at? Me, still. Now, I am getting a little nervous about the time that I have left. Because I still have 20 minutes to complete this mission, but it might not be enough time. Eleven. Yeah, eleven one. Oh, he's on fire again. Seems to be happening a lot to this guy. Oh, and he put it out. Seventeen minutes. I don't want to fail this mission. I guess we're just going to have to go in close at this point. I'm going to let the game decide what sort of ammo is going to be good enough at this point. It might very well be armor-piercing. Increase the flank. 15 minutes left. Definitely whittled him down a little bit. There, destroy the casemate, put him on fire. Unfortunately, I have... I don't think I have knocked out any guns yet. Accuracy 14%. Range 8 kilometers. 
All right, so he had 13 inches of armor. 13, three. At, what am I at? 7.8 kilometers, so let's say seven half. I can penetrate 19 inches of armor. We're gonna go for AP all the way. Boom, casemate destroyed. 13 minutes left on this match. Fortunately, his accuracy is still dreadful. 3%. Slow to full speed. Get that accuracy up here. 6.5 kilometers out. I have taken a hit. I'm flooding and I've taken structural damage. This is kind of what I was worried about. But I need to sink this ship in the next 11 minutes or the mission fails. Rudder damaged. Ammo destroyed. Oh, fuck's sake. Are you kidding? Are you going to be detonating me right now? just puts out way more firepower than I could possibly want to, or I could possibly do. Ah, <sighs> okay. I wouldn't be surprised if this is going to fail again. Come on. Just cracking his armor. Jesus, are you kidding? Another ammo detonation? Yeah, Santa Paula is going to go down. Now, for all of you armchair admirals, I think I made the right call going in close. Because now I'm really doing a lot of damage to him. There you go, structural damage. I detonated again. Um, I'm going in close. I did do a lot more damage. And had I stayed at long range, I probably wouldn't have had time to complete the mission. And yes, I know that I once again failed this mission, but at the very least I got quite a bit closer than I did previous. So, um, what's going to happen next with this mission is that I'm going to be trying it on stream. Stream is going to be Friday morning, just like last time, that's Friday morning my time. I'll schedule the stream so you can see it pop up on my YouTube channel and you can see what time it's going to be for you. That's when I'm going to be doing this mission again. So, you probably wouldn't be seeing it on the channel again as a separate mission. It's just going to be part of another stream. And with that, you've reached the end of the video. Now, if you like this game, you can get it. Uh, it is on early access. If you want it right now, you're going to be paying full price of 50 bucks. If you're uh, okay with waiting, you're going to be looking at a price of 30. And it's going to get released, I don't know, sometime next year. I still don't have an exact release date. If you like my content, then I can really use your support. You can do that by using Patreon down below. Uh, a couple of bucks a month, it really helps me out. It's not that much, it might not be that much, it doesn't need to be that much. But then again, I have 21,000 subscribers at this point. So if all of you would pitch in just a bit, a buck, maybe two, I'd be perfectly fine. So, please support me on Patreon, link down below. And I will catch you for more Ultimate Admiral on Friday. Where we're going to be uh, at least tackling this mission and probably some others. Catch you then.